Hey everybody, it's Brad, another Floriani video for you. Um, today, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how uh, to work the auto digitizer. Um, straight up, auto digitizing is not really this program's strongest point, I'll be honest with you. Um, just taking a, a, an image in with literally no work, turning it into an embroidery design, it's not quite that simple usually, um, but I'm going to show you how it works. Um, and it really is still easier than, than hand digitizing the design from scratch. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you how it works. Um, open up your program in my Floriani today, choose create a new design. Um, and then this little wizard looking fella here in the, the corner here, you hover over it, it says auto digitizing. We're going to left click on that. Uh, and then you need to select the image that you're going to use. Um, and I'm going to do this little image of Tinkerbell here. Uh, I'll include this graphic uh, on, t on this month's CD so you could do the same thing I'm doing. So we're going to left click on Tinkerbell, choose open, uh, and hit next. Oh, uh, output stitch type needs to be on auto. Okay, we're going to hit next. Okay, on this screen what we can do is change the area that the the program is going to look at um, in in creating this image um, there's a little bit of text down here so I want to cut that off and the way you do that is we'll take this middle little black square and drag it up until it's above that so you see the shaded area is no longer has this little bit here um, and we can move this down a little bit too move this over so that only Tinkerbell herself is covered. I just accidentally clicked the whole thing and moved it on accident. Okay, so you move these little handles in so that more or less the shaded area is only around where she is. Um, and here you can also set the size that it's going to be. So this is 7 inches by 7 inches. That's pretty big. We'll make her 5. So she's around 5 by 5. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and hit next. Okay, in the next screen it shows me all the colors that it sees. Um, now, we're going to do something that's going to seem a little weird, um, but there is a good reason for it, believe me. Um, what we're going to do is hit the edit button here, and I'm going to change the background um, from white to uh, gray. Uh, and the reason for that is her eyes are white, and these little things on her feet are white, and her teeth are white, and if I have a white background it's going to want to take these out uh, as well because it'll just remove all white um, when it detects that the background is white so it's kind of a weird thing that the auto digitizer does masterworks does the same thing um, so we're going to go ahead and left click on edit and it actually opens up ms paint uh, which is a program that's built into your computer so all we're going to do here is go up to this paint bucket tool it's under tools left click on the paint bucket and then choose any color over here that's not in the design. So I'm just going to do this gray color. And just left click anywhere in the white. Okay, and then there's a little bit of white background left here, a little bit of white background left here. Okay, and so that's it. I'm done. Um, but I do need to go up and save it. This little picture of a file here, left click on that, choose save, again, and exit. Okay. Now this is going to import that image in and notice my background is now gray. It detects one more color um, and I'm going to remove the check mark next to this gray, which is my new color. Um, so I left click on that and that is going to make it so that this does not digitize this background color. Okay? You know, it's if you got to rewind and watch that again. I know I'm going kind of quick, but I'm trying to make a bunch of videos tonight for you, so all right, so we've got the grays unchecked, all the other ones are checked. We hit finish. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, you might have to wait a couple minutes. Um, what you don't want to do is get impatient and start clicking um, because it will crash the program, believe me. I've, <laughs> I've done it plenty of times. But okay, so here she is. And right off the bat, I notice a couple of problems. Um, I'm going to put this in 3D so we can see it better. So it's missed entirely this eyelash and the little detail on her nose here. Um, and it's chosen some kind of funky stitches here in her leg. Uh, and here, this part of the wing is a column stitch while her 
the the surrounding bits are all a flat like fill type stitch um, so we do have a, a little bit of work to do not as much as if we had to trace the whole thing ourselves um, but it's far from perfect I mean, sure could you sew it out right now and have it be recognizable yeah but you know that's not what we're going for here we want this whole thing to be um, as nice as we can get it um, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to make it so all the stitches are the same um, and just get rid of the fact that this and this and this and these and even a little bit down here are different stitch types um, I, I want them all to be a, a complex fill auto digitized designs tend to work best as just a simple fill I, I know I say simple fill and they call it complex fill but I don't know why they call it complex fill to be honest with you. I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything. Just left click and drag a box around all of Tinkerbell. I'm going to right click somewhere on Tinkerbell and I'm going to go convert to complex fill. Now it might take your computer a few minutes to do this as well. I'm just going to wait until it does it. Okay. Now she's a lot more uniform now. Um, and uh, so that's going to make it easier. Um, now, if you wanted to, you can go in and change the stitch types to be different stitch types. You know, if you want to have a special effect in one spot or another, I'm just showing you a way that will work. Um, there are lots of ways that will that will work, really. Um, but this way is a way that works. Um, so I notice that we still have this this hole here, of course, and the hole where her nose should be. Um, so we'll actually deal with that last. Another thing I notice is that the outline here is the first thing that sews out. So if we go and hit this slow redraw button up here, I'm just going to simulate sewing this out and show you what this looks like when it sews out. It does all the outline first and then fills in around it. And that's not the order that you generally want to do things in. You want to have the outline sew out last so it's laying on top where they're overlapped um, so we want to change that the difficulty here is that there are parts of this black that aren't just outline there's detail in her eyes um, that we want to to actually not sew out last because there are some things on top So what we can do is take, go over to our sequence view, and the icons are really tiny. I have not found out a way to make these icons any bigger. It's something that really should be done, though, to be honest with you. I don't know why uh, they don't let you make these icons bigger, because it's very difficult to see. But I can, I can see that this is the black. Um, and if I left-click on it, I can drag it down. And I'm holding my left mouse button and dragging it down the sequence view, and I let go. Now the black is last. And see how it's just got more definition in a lot of these areas? But some of them, it doesn't, because we've got problems here where the, um, the black is covering her eye. It just makes her look crazy and demonic. That's not good. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually have the white sew out after the black. There. But wait, now her wings are having that same problem where the white is sewing out on top of the black, so the outline's not as defined. It is down here, but it's not over here. So what we actually are going to have to do is split apart this white area so that the wings sew out before the black, but the eyes and mouth and little pom-poms sew out after the black. There's no real easy way to do this. So what we're gonna have to do is hit the little plus sign next to the white, and I know it's white because I can't see anything there. Hit the little plus sign, and I've got all these different fill things that are a part of it. So it's kind of a process of elimination. That's part of the wing, that's part of the wing, that's part of the eye, that's part of the eye, that's the mouth, that's part of the wing, and that's part of the wing. So these two and then the first two. 
So I'm going to hold down my control key so I can select multiple things. Left click on this one and then on the first two. Now I've got the wings and just the wings selected. And I'm going to click and drag them so that they are above the black in the sequence view. There. Now I've got more definition in my outline because it's showing out on top of the white wings. My pom-poms and my eyes and mouth are on top of the black, which is what I wanted. And now what we have to do is add in the eyebrow that's missing and the nose that's missing. So we're going to have to do a little bit of drawing, but that's okay. We're going to go in and go up to my drawing tools up here. We're going to select under artwork, we're going to select pen and then we're going to choose complex fill. I also am going to want to zoom in. So I'm going to use my the scroll wheel on my mouse is one way. If I just move it in, see I move it in and out, I'm, I'm scrolling on my mouse. Or if I'm using a laptop, I'll just use this to zoom in to a certain percentage, say 300%. Pan up a little bit using the arrow keys. Um, here or here to go left and right here and here to go up and down um, or you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard which is what I'm doing right now just the arrow keys right on the keyboard anyway the point is we need to draw these eyebrows in now there's one other step and that is to choose what color I'm using I need to right click on the color that I'm using on the color wheel down here and then I'm gonna left click 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 all the way around I'm clicking with the left mouse button till I get to the end and then I'm gonna right click this is what angle the stitch is going to be it doesn't really matter that much for this although I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it like that just actually you know what I'm gonna make it horizontal so that it contrasts with this one which is going vertical and then when you're satisfied with that just right well, you can right click a few times or you can hit the select arrow up here. And there we see that we have now digitized her eyebrow. You want to do the same thing with her nose. And it's just kind of like a triangular shape. Right click, select tool, generates her little nose. That's it. That'll that'll sew out and look pretty nice. I mean, it's it's not going to look like a professional digitized it um, because it, a, a professional didn't it was auto digitized but this will give you an idea of how to get good results from using the auto digitizer in this um, you know you, you don't expect magic um, but you know if a, if a kid wants a particular cartoon character this is a good way to do it and, and generally the artwork that you can get for cartoon characters works pretty well with auto digitizing so the steps are going to be a little different for anything you do. There's no way that I can make a video that's going to cover any type of artwork, but um, this is a good introduction um, to how to do it. Uh, you know what, I actually just noticed something else. Her eyes are supposed to be blue, but to be honest with you, I think it would look better without the blue eyes at all. See, we've got one blue eye and one black eye, and just, just the way the layering worked. I could take these and drag it so that the blue is actually the last thing. But I think that looks kind of crazy. So I might select that blue reflection in the eyes and delete it, just a little bit of artistic license. <gasps> but look, that left a hole in her eye, that's no good. <laughs> yeah, so that left a hole in this. There's actually something that, that can be done about this though. Um, there's a tool that lets you go in and edit shapes here. Uh, if I go into the shape tool and left click on this area that's got the hole in it, I can actually go in, if I right click anywhere in this hole, one of my options is to delete hole. It's going to take it a minute. <laughs> Close it right up. I think that looks better than with the blue. It's just me. I mean, it's, you know, to each their own. Um, and then the final and, and 
arguably one of the most important things to do with this is to make sure that you save it using save to sew um, and what that's going to do is add the correct underlay and the correct pull compensation so that this will actually sew out and not leave big giant gaps like you actually can see that there are big giant gaps in here and that save to sew thing will actually tighten that up automatically for you um, so we're going to go file and do save to sew um, if I don't know what I'm going to sew a design out on, I'm just making it, I'll usually make it to sew out on a t-shirt, because the settings for t-shirt really work for almost anything. Um, oh, where's this? Where's the t? Here we go, knit t-shirt, I digitized. And this is a, well, it's only letting me choose open close here, and it is a heavy design, so that's fine. I'm going to hoop the fabric, say next, hit apply. Yes, we made the design in this program. Taking a while for this one. It must be making a lot of changes. And that's pretty regular for, for a design that you auto-digitize. Uh, we hit Next. You can read the little blurb here. It tells you how to sew it out. You know, what type of stabilizer and needles and such. Say Finish. And now I want to save this design. I'm going to save this in my kids folder and we're going to name it Tink and I'm going to do first I'm going to save it as a C2S um, and once I save it as a C2S here then I can go back at any time and and open it up and convert it to whatever format I'm going to actually sew it out in the reason I want it to be a C2S is why because if I find out later that the design doesn't sew out very well I can go back and edit it um, but anyway this is a you know, really, this is a pretty decent Tinkerbell, I must say. Not to toot my own horn or nothing, but I think this came out pretty good. Any little girl would be pleased to have this embroidered on a shirt or um, something. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.